Hi, I have in front of me here uh, a range of I.O. links here. And in this video, I'm going to cover the topic of how you would fit an I.O. link to a Sky uh, high definition box and run it to a second television. So you can both view and also change channels remotely uh, on that second television. Now, th the background to this is that Sky and their wisdom have made a decision to remove the traditional RF2 output with a 9 volt output on it, which used to both modulate and send a power signal to control the Sky Eye. Um, from their more recent box. The general gist would be that they're trying to encourage people to have bo multiple boxes rather than have a single box used for multiple things. But there is a way around this and using an IO link allows you to do this. So what I've decided to do is just a, a very generic video here because it's the same procedure regardless of what IO link I use uh, fundamentally here. So I have one triax uh, IO link and I also have a, a lab link from lab here and I'll actually do the demo here on the lab uh, link one here but before I add anything to the box what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the box up and make sure that it's ready um, for this IO link so I'm just going to back up out of here and what I'm going to do is on my remote control I'm going to hit the services button which I'll do here and in quick succession I'm going to hit 0, zero 1 select and I'm going to bring myself in here to a setup menu here and what I want to do is I want to arrow over as far as RF out, okay? So RF out here. And we'll see there's two settings in down here. So we can set the output frequency here. So you can set it from anywhere from channel 21 all the way up to 68. And then by default, normally on a box, the power output is set to off. I've actually just got in a few minutes ago, turned it on. But I can turn it on and off here as I like. So turn it back on and if I want to save my settings I come along and I hit the green button and now we're in a situation where the box has actually been successfully set up to actually support an IO link if we add one on. So I'll come along here and I'm going to, um, on an IO link the, the simplest version which is like the lab link one here you basically have an input from the IO um, port on the skybox which provides both the power and the signal to power this and also uh, you have a, a, an RF input here, a, a, an RF in here, which is generally not used. But if you had something like a Serview TV aerial, you could feed the signal in here and have that signal combined with the output of the Skybox. So when you run it through your television, you'll have both the, the feed, base feed for the Irish terrestrial channels, plus, we'll say, also the RF out here. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come along and I'm going to connect it in here like this. Now, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to get a cable. And I'm going to take it from the RF out here. So I have this cable here with this connector out. And I'm going to come along and I'm going to connect it here. And we can see here now the sky eye is after lighting up. Okay? So on this television here, which I'm just going to rotate around backwards now, there is, I'm trying to do this without knocking it off, I'm going to come along. And I'm going to push this in here now. Okay, so we now have the RF output coming from the uh, IO link running into this television here. But if we come along here, we'll see that we have chosen channel 36. So what we need to do is actually come along and tune in this television to select channel 36. So what I, I'm going to do here is just the source one here. I'm going to come up to TV. And we can see here that this is now channel 36. If, for instance, if I went to channel 6 to set the channel 36 in terms of output frequency. But if I come along here, and if we see here PO06 and channel 36, which is just a part of the UHS spectrum. And we can see here that if this was a remote television, that I'd be able to do it. And indeed, if I grab my remote control here now, uh, I could change channels on the thing. So if I hit the services button, I could bring up the menu via the sky eye here that's on it. Okay? So you can see it's a fairly uh, straightforward procedure on it. Now I'm going to say the one big drawback of I.O. links is that the power output levels that you can achieve from the I.O. port is not as good as with an RF2. So that people experience a lot more um, potential issues, let's say, when they're using I.O. links. Although they do work and there's certain limitations with it. Now I have another video in this series where I'm going to cover the whole topic of troubleshooting. Things that will, won't, will work, won't work and work around for them. Okay, So um, that's it anyway, the basic overview of how to install your I.O. link onto your Sky high definition receiver.